Hello everybody, welcome to the Yas Marina circuit as we get set for the second day of action here in the season finale to the 2019 Formula Renault Euro Cup. My name's Chris Hartley and I'm going to be talking you through today's action which begins with this 20 minute qualifying session to set the grid for what will be the final race of the season, round 20 of the championship coming up in just about four and a half hours time. It is... Uh, Morning here in uh, Yas Marina in Abu Dhabi. It is just coming up to uh, nine o'clock. The cars will be on track in just a few minutes' time. They're all lined up in the pit lane. Beautiful, clear skies, a gorgeous sunny day as it ever is here uh, on the Yas Island and the Yas Marina circuit. And uh, yesterday uh, we had a qualifying session in the afternoon and we had an early evening race, the first time that the Formula Renault Euro Cup has run. Under the cover of darkness, the race was won by that man, Oscar Piastri, and with it, he extended his championship lead to 20 and a half points. There are only 25 points still available with a win in the final race of the season. Victor Martins had qualified yesterday on pole position by the narrowest of margins, just two thousandths of a second clear of Oscar Piastri, but he didn't get the start he wanted off the line. Oscar Piastri, in his own words, said, I didn't get a very good start, so, Os so uh, Victor must have had a, an even worse start. And Lorenzo Colombo, who started third on the grid, had a very good start and almost got the lead of the race. But as it was, it was Piastri that led into turn one and Colombo got into second place. So from first to third, slipped Victor Martins. There he is getting ready to get into the car. It was an early safety car after there was some uh, contract contact outs on track uh, between... Uh, between two cars, uh, the Vitek driver, the Czech driver, Petra Vitecek, and the driver that came off worse than that was Xavier Jovaras, the Spaniard for the GRS team. Uh, his car, Grand Tour, off the edge of the circuit. That brought about a safety car after a couple of laps of racing. And on the restart, Oscar Piastri got his head down, got away. Shortly afterwards, Lorenzo Colombo, whose teammate to Victor Martins, uh, was given the instruction to let the championship contender through, which he did. And... Victor then set about getting his head down and putting in a series of very, very quick lap times to close the gap down bit by bit throughout the rest of the 30 minute plus one lap race. He got the gap down from almost three seconds to at one point just over one second. But it was the last lap of the race by the time he caught Oscar Piastri and he just made a slight mistake going over the curbs on the exit to one of the turns. And that was enough to uh, widen the gap. Oscar Piastri from his point of view had well a near, a near flawless performance from our point of view. It looked flawless. I caught a word with him uh, last night and he echoed the sentiments that he said to us uh, after the race on the live stream that that was a relief. That was, in his words, the most stressful half an hour of his entire life. But uh, he, he drove ex exceptionally well under what must have been pretty difficult circumstances. He did admit to having one lockup. I think he said it was a turn three. He had one lockup on one lap of the race, uh, but that was about it. He was uh, otherwise absolutely uh, perfect and went on to take his seventh win of the season. So it's an absolute must really here, you would say, for Victor Martins to try and snatch pole position. Having topped the timesheets in all the meet practice sessions on Thursday, in qualifying on Friday, he would uh, fancy his chances of doing that. Having said that, as I mentioned yesterday, the gap has been coming down. He was very quick very early on but Oscar Piastri seven tenths down on him in that first free practice session on Thursday has slowly worked away at it got the gap down and uh, he's now very much his match in terms of speed there's the number three car of Alexander Smolia third in the championship you can't catch the uh, two ahead now so third place in the standings looks uh, to uh, be where he'll finish come what may today Alex uh, one of the RHGP drivers uh, moved to the team this year, his second season of Formula Renault Euro Cup, and he finished fourth yesterday behind Victor Martins, Oscar Piastri, and Lorenzo Colombo. Lorenzo, a fairly lonely race, back on the podium for the first time for a few weekends since the Hungaro ring. Well, the car's then heading out, and it's a uh, fairly short, sharp session, this, so uh, not expecting them to come back to the pits, make any changes, and go back out for uh, a second run at this, unless they have any key issues. So they'll go out yesterday, they spent a couple of laps just getting up to speed, making sure they got the tyres in the right condition before they went for their flying laps. And they were looking at uh, probably three flying laps on the Hankook tyres in these conditions. So the clock starts to tick down immediately. It's a long lap this, five and a half kilometres long. Fastest lap times that we've seen so far this weekend, two minutes and eight seconds. That lap takes a bit longer than that. So 
down and out that apple two. Ten or eleven minutes of flat out qualifying to see who gets uh, pole position. So yesterday, uh, the top four, as I gave it to you, Sebastian Fernandez uh, came through to fifth after a very good battle with uh, Kush Miney, who managed to get past late on in the race. Kush, though, uh, finishing on the on sixth place, was the top rookie in the race yesterday. Uh, so picked up his third rookie victory of the uh, season and the Hankook Trophy. Uh, that went with it. That uh, followed his victories in the first weekend of the season at Monza and at Spa mid-season. So uh, good drive by uh, the Indian in the M2 competition car. Matteo Nanini uh, was in seventh place after a long battle all the way through the race with Henri Cordiel, his uh, MP Motorsport teammate. Frank Bird uh, has, uh, was a driver that had issues yesterday in that he didn't get to start the race from his grid position. So yesterday was uh, on the grid in ninth spot and as they set off into the formation lap the car didn't get underway so he started the race on the pit lane and that uh, rather ruined his chances of getting a points finish so we'll see what he can do today so Oscar Piastri, Victor Martins, Lorenzo Colombo on the podium yesterday, Alex Smolia, Sebastian Fernandez and Kushmani uh, fourth, fifth and sixth, Patrick Pasma rather was seventh yesterday he had a a very good overtaking manoeuvre quite late on in the race to uh, get ahead of Ormery Cordiel who on the same lap was then passed by Caio Collet, who came through from outside the top 10 to finish in the end in eighth place. Cordil ninth and Matteo Nanini was 10th uh, position. Uh, incidentally, after that contact in the early part of the race yesterday between uh, Petro Patejcik, uh, the Bytec driver in the number 53 car, and uh, the driver that was the only one that did finish the race yesterday, Javier uh, Yovaras, uh, there's going to be a two-place grid penalty given to uh, Patejcik for the race. So wherever he qualifies here, they'll have to start the race two positions further down. So for Victor Martins, the only way he can now win this uh, championship is to win the race. He's 20 and a half points behind. The only position in the race which will give him more than that is by winning the race and scoring 25 points. So he has to win the race, but he also needs Piastri to finish eighth or lower to make that happen. So Martins has got to win. Piastri, at the same time, has got to finish eighth or lower in the race. If Victor Martins doesn't win the race, uh, it doesn't matter what happens to Oscar Piastri. Piastri will still have enough points in hand to win the championship title. There is uh, the GRS car of who had that misfortune yesterday. Uh, the Spaniard in his second uh, season now of uh, competition, Xavier uh, Yovaras. Uh, we've got uh, cars having popped back into the pits now, including the number four car of uh, Gregoire. You can see the Swiss driver. Change of tyres. They are limited in terms of slick tyres to two sets of uh, tyres, two sets of new uh, tyres to last both qualifying sessions and both races. You can see there new tyres going on. There are new tyres, it seems, going on to Caio Collette's car also. So the driver who wrapped up earlier the season, he wrapped up at Hockenheim, in fact, last time at the uh, Rookie Championship. is there. Uh, Alexander Smolier there as well. And it looks like brand new tyres going on to his car as well. The front left now just being changed. New tyres on all of the others. So they are going for it here. Uh, they're going to have an earlier race than yesterday as well, so it's going to be uh, right in the middle of the afternoon uh, sunshine here. That's the one machine of uh, Federico Mavastiti, the Italian, going out. Sebastian Fernandez, the Arden driver. Team owned by Gary Horner, managed uh, the former Renault Euro Cup team by Ben Salter, the Bambi based squad. With three cars here this weekend. And there, despite the different liveries, these two cars both come out of the RHGP uh, stable there. Victor Martins in the number 11 car, uh, just heading out there. New tyres on for him. It looks like everybody has gone for new tyres for this qualifying session then, so they'll use them, a bit of life out of them in, in qualifying, and then use these tyres again for the race. They've gone out, opted to uh, do a lap and then come in, change tyres and head back out now to try and find track position. So they're going to have to do an outlap and again, it's going to be down to about 10 minutes of actual qualifying time for them. Other cars going out, Patrick Pasma, Blonde Vin goes through and 
32 behind him, Frank Bird with the yellow wing mirrors. And there, Victor Martins in the number 11 car. Backed by the Renault Sport Academy. As is uh, Kayo Collette. Back last year, Christian Lungard, second of the championship and also champion of last year, Max Futrell. Both the uh, RH GP squad. Times champions now in the Formula Renault Euro Cup. Three consecutive years there won. And they're on the brink of taking their second driver's title on the bounce after that uh, win last year with Max Futrell. Got to race in the International F3 Championship as has uh, Christian Lungard. So getting a bit of weaving not to get heat in the tyres, you've got to be careful how you get heat in the tyres, not to get the heat into them too soon. What will the track conditions be like? The first car's on track today, whereas yesterday in qualifying we'd already had a few uh, different sessions, the different categories that are racing here this uh, weekend. Radicals uh, racing sports cars, we've got some uh, tin tops racing as well. The 86 uh, Cup also in action. So lots of different types of uh, rubber being laid down uh, on the circuit, which can have an effect on the way you set your car up as well. So the driver's jostling to try and find track position now. Twenty-one twists and turns through this uh, five and a half kilometre long circuit, the longest straight 1.14 kilometres long. The track actually has five different circuit configurations which are possible. This is the run through underneath the uh, Yas Hotel which looks absolutely spectacular when it's lit up at night, all with blue lights all around and uh, the gardens at the uh, back of the hotel. You can get a great view of this uh, last sector of the lap. So still building up speed, they come out of uh, turn 21 left-hander is uh, turn one through that 90 degree left they go through a pretty quick section then weaving left through turn two right through turn uh, three left again through turn four then down to the first of the chicanes at turns five and six before the hairpin at turn seven which leads onto that uh, long back straight it's 270 brake horsepower cars with very lightweight design to the car as well, 609 kilograms, 8 litre engines, absolutely charge along. Top speed of the cars at the end of that straight will be around about 240 kilometres an hour. And around this lap they are 70% full throttle, there's 32 gear changes around the lap. They've got uh, G-forces to consider as well. But down this straight they go, down towards turn uh, 8 and 9, which is another chicane, a left-right chicane carry momentum through there. It's the biggest breaking point on the uh, entire circuit. From there, they go under this bridge. It's the bridge of walkover to get to the circuit from my hotel each morning, you can walk right over the uh, circuit. Uh, and there you can see it's a, uh, although it's flat out, it's a big sweeping curve as they come out of the chicane. The, uh, the circuit never really straightens out, although it's flat out, before they then hit the brakes for turns 11, 12 and uh, 13 through this uh, sequence again, a, sh a chicane sequence through into a 90 degree left-hander at turn 14 they head and then into the uh, final sector through the very quick flat out uh, right-hand kink at turns 15 and 16 and then it's hard on the brakes into turn 17 as they come towards the uh, Yas Hotel. Lots of cars been locking up there and uh, one of the drivers uh, said to me yesterday, if you lock up there on one lap, you tend to lock up in every uh, lap. Leonardo Lurandi, I think it was, that said that to me. He said it's uh, difficult to get that absolutely uh, right. And there's not much space to uh, run wide there either. So through 17, the left at 18, which takes them under the hotel. They exit through there, through the left at 19, coming towards you now and heading towards the final two turns. Turn 20, the right-hander grip and traction play a huge role around here. They look relatively easy corners but you have to have the car absolutely balanced through turn 20 and 21. Right, so going on to uh, flying laps now. At the moment, uh, the best time that we've got is a 2 minute 13. That's not representative of how quick these cars will be. We're looking at a 2 minute 8 uh, lap time. Lorenzo Colombo heading along then to be the first possibly to set a benchmark time in this session. Yesterday qualifying in third place, but he was 
in third place and quite some distance behind the top two, Martins and Piastri. He was almost half a second slower than them, uh, but in third place. It was pretty tightly packed behind him as well, qualifying. Smolia, Fernandez, Miney uh, and Anini all within the same half a tenth of a second of each other in that qualifying session. So the Italian Lorenzo Colombo got his sixth podium of the season yesterday. Gets his head down now. Um, we've had uh, Hugo de Vilda getting two tens now, two ten point four. That still won't be good enough for provisional pole. So under the bridge and out through turn ten comes Lorenzo Colombo. Seleka Roy for the time being. And then Javier Lov Jovaras have moved up into first and second positions uh, respectively in the session. But this could be the lap that uh, sees Lorenzo Colombo go to the top of the times potentially. Who's another driver after yesterday's race, even though it was a bit cooler, a little bit cooler yesterday evening than it was during the day, hopping straight into the uh, makeshift ice uh, bath that they've got here at uh, in the back of the paddock. Tatiana Nini into the 2.09s, but Lorenzo Colombo about, I think, to go quicker. Eight minutes left on the clock, just goes a little bit wide on the exit to uh, 19, coming out of the hotel, drags the car across to the left, through 20 he goes, using all of the kerbs then as he goes into the uh, final turn, out of turn 21, get a good exit here, that's a nice tidy exit, and where is this going to put Lorenzo Colombo to the top of the times, but it's only a 2.09, 2.09.019, he's going to have to find some more time than that. Uh, you suspect to challenge for the front row of the grid and Victor Martins just behind him is the first driver to get into the 208, so 208.590. So into the pits for uh, Sebastian Fernandez and they are looking at the data on the car through the laptop. So maybe some sort of system problem here on the Arden car and Sebastian Fernandez at the moment stranded in the pit lane and only 16th quickest all the other cars are out on circuit but Victor Martins has gone quickest 208.590 that's still a few tenths slower than yesterday's pole time Lorenzo Colombo we watched go around the lap second quickest Mattia Nanini third still 209.288 Oscar Piastri is fourth at the moment with his first effort being a 209.509 but I'm sure there's more to come uh, Leonardo Lorandi who had an issue with the car yesterday and uh, visited the pits, finished 15th and outside the points in the end. He's fifth place in the 25 car, 209.7 for him. Hugo de Vilda, who was quickest, is now sixth. Frank Bird, seventh. Gregoire Saucy, eighth. Aubrey Cordiel and uh, Petra Patejcik in ninth and tenth. But Patejcik's got this two-place grid penalty. And Kush Miney's just crossed the line to go second quickest, 208.782. Just under two-tenths of a second away uh, from Victor Martin's fastest time so far. How about Alex uh, Smolia then? Yeah, Russian driver. First flying lap here. He's 20th at the moment, but he hasn't uh, tried yet. And now he is pushing on to see if he can get himself up in that first couple of rows of the grid. Great shot that as he fires his way out underneath the uh, footbridge out of turn 10. And then arcing all the way, this left-hand kink, all the way down towards the heaviest braking zone at turn 11. Trying to follow him is uh, Leonardo uh, Lorandi just in the background there. Leonardo, in mixed conditions, managed to get uh, pole position overall at Spa mid-season. So Lorandi qualified 12th yesterday. Spoke to him after qualifying, was a bit disappointed with that. Felt if he just strung it together, he could have been uh, up in the top 10. So he was a little bit frustrated yesterday, and then things got worse for him. Uh, in the race, see if he can get a good time by hanging on to the back of Alexander Smolia. Leonardo Lorandi, the younger brother to Alessio Lorandi, who raced in the European Formula 3 Championship, then GP3, then F2, winner of the Poe Grand Prix a few years ago. Alexander Smolia, though, looks like he's on a good lap here. Piastri has gone to the top of the times, you can see on the graphic with a 208.548. Here comes Alexander Smolia then to go across the line. And on his first flying lap, he only goes sixth, so 209.153. Coyote Colette's gone into second place, 208.569. That's just 21 thousandths of a second behind uh, Piastri. You've got just 42 thousandths of a second covering the top three now as well. Alexander Smolia is pushing on there as uh, he goes through the left-right sequence at turns three and four. Looks like he's going straight onto another flying lap here. So more to come, I think, from uh, Alexander track at the moment not as quick as it was yesterday 
2.08.548 is the current qualifying time. The very best time that we had yesterday in qualifying was at 208.324 from Victor Martins. Martins at the moment is in third place and he really could do with being on pole position. That's his key focus here, he was saying. And although he was obviously a little bit downbeat yesterday, he was saying, look, you know, it's still possible. Anything is still possible. I'm going to keep trying. And the first objective will be to get pole position. Following uh, number four, Gregoire Saucy here who is currently sitting in 13th place, one of the RHGP uh, drivers, making his way through that difficult right hand at turn 17, through the left at 18, under the footbridge of the Yaz Hotel through turns 19. He will now pop and back into our view on the exit to that turn. Russell well, see is one of the drivers that hasn't competed in the entire season. Swiss driver. 19 years of age, competed last year in the German F4 Championship, finished in ninth place, got a couple of podiums in that, did some races in the Italian F4 Championship as well, uh, and uh, a couple of years ago was for a time racing in this championship, the Formula Renault Euro Cup with the AVF team, had five races in it. Prior to that, did some sports car racing back in 2016 in the B2B Championship where he was one of the front runners and finished on the podium. Brugos will see, trying to get back into the uh, rhythm of being a single-seater driver the moment it's uh, in 12th place Piastri 208.548 we're following Alexander Smolia who's got it to fourth place with that second effort so 208.672 for him that means you've got just over a tenth of a second covering the top four now pretty close not quite as close as yesterday but the gap between the top two is 21 thousandths of a second which is impressive as Smolia again runs wide uses all of the curbs there on that exit to turn four through the chicane at turn five and six down immediately to the big left hairpin at turn seven he will go underneath the shadow of these huge grandstands which when they're full can ho hold uh, over 40,000 people and exit the length of this straight at over 1.1 uh, kilometers that's like a Renault Sport Academy livery car in front so it could be Victor Martins or uh, Colette that he's uh, coming up to uh, Lorenzo Colombo, who we saw early on, going for another lap here. He's down in sixth place. So currently, you've got Piastri, Paulette, Martins, the top three. Smolly in fourth. Miney in fifth place. As the best rookie by some distance. Xavier Yovarat, the next best rookie, down in 11th place. Colombo is sixth. Pasma is seventh. De Vilda in eighth. Nanini ninth. Frank Bird into the top ten again, the British driver. And there's a replay of that very ragged moment. He did it on the previous lap, almost exactly the same. But he was even wilder that time, the uh, Russian, Alexander Smolia. Finished uh, in last year's championship, his first season of Formula Renault Euro Cup. In 12th place with the Tech 1 team. His best result last year being a fourth place finish at Monza. But he's now become a uh, multiple race winner in this championship. Caio Collette getting the back end of the car. Slightly out of shape there. He uh, exited the turn. That's where Victor Martins just got a bit out of shape yesterday. Collette pushing hard. And there is Victor Martins. So Victor about to go onto another lap. It's going to be his last chance. Less than a minute to go. But he's gone to the top of the times with that lap. 208.147. That could be enough by over a tenth of a second he's done it. So 208.147 Victor Martins. From third to first he goes. Piastri in second. Go Collette third. Uh, Alexander Smolia now goes third, so Kyle Collette's just dropped to fourth place. Smolia with more good laps here. He was good yesterday at keeping the speed up all the way through the session was Alex uh, Ander and uh, Smolia now into the top three. So it's Martins, Piastri, Smolia, Collette fourth. Colombo, who was third on the grid yesterday, you're watching now. He's only fifth at the moment. Kushmine sixth, Patrick Pasma seventh. Frank Bird's gone up to eighth place as well. Hugo de Vild in ninth and Henri Cordiel rounding out the top ten as it stands. We're into the final. 11, 10 seconds now of the session. There's Oscar Piastri. Has he got anything left to find here on what's going to be his final attempt to get pole position? He doesn't absolutely need to get pole position. He's leading the championship by pretty comfortable, if he ever was comfortable, margin of 20.5 seconds, 25.5 points rather. And the second place in the race, third place in the race, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh place finish would do it for him. And... Uh, eighth or lower as long as Victor Martins didn't win the race so all the pressure really is on uh, Victor in a sense to get this pole position which he's doing at the moment the flag is now out Oscar Piastri a tenth of a second behind much bigger gap than yesterday 
147 for Victor Martins, and that, I believe, is the fastest lap of the weekend. Quicker than even he went in practice on Thursday. 208.268 for Piastri, 208.511 for Matteo Nanini, who right at the end of the session gets up to third place. So fantastic effort for uh, him. Two Arden cars go through. Just following uh, Piastri, who's still on it here on this uh, final lap. Don't get the split times to see if he's improving or not. Gregor Sorzi is about to go over the line. He is currently 15th. Head of the last corner then comes the championship leader, Oscar Piastri. Goes over the line, takes the chequered flag. But does he improve enough? No, 208.208 seconds is his best lap. So second place he'll have to settle for on the grid this time, as he was yesterday with Victor Martins on pole position. But remember yesterday, he got the lead of the race by turn one. Ooh, somebody going super wide there. That looks like Lucas Aleko Roy, the uh, German driver, is judging the uh, exit to the turn. Over the line goes Caio Collette. Much better qualifying for him today. He's going to be fourth on the grid for the race this afternoon. But uh, super effort. We didn't see him go through on his uh, final lap. But Matteo Nanini, from the tail end of... In fact, I think he was outside of the top ten. I think he was in the 11th, maybe 12th place, actually. Uh, and then on that final lap, Matteo Nanini found something special to go third quickest. He was in the top three in one of the practice sessions on Thursday. But uh, last year's UAE Formula 4 champion who had seven race wins in the series, which takes in the Dubai circuit and this circuit, Yas Marina. And he had four wins around here last year in Formula 4. Uh, well, that knowledge coming good as Matteo Nanini, with an excellent effort, goes to third place right at the end of the session. Lorenzo Colombo was another one to improve late on to go fourth. So in the end, Alexander Smolia, who'd got himself up to third place with about 30 seconds left on the clock, he uh, ends up dropping down to fifth place. So it's Victor Martins that will be on pole position. And it will be the ninth time this season. So almost half the races, Victor Martins will have started from pole position. Number 11 car with a 208.014 second lap. And even a bit more time on his second run through. He did two very quick back-to-back -back laps at the end of the session yesterday that were within four thousandths of a second of each other. And uh, he's done something similar there. Fastest lap of the weekend, 208.014 seconds for Martins. Oscar Piastri had briefly narrowed the gap, 208.208, but in the end, it was almost two tenths of a second as Martins crossed the line late on with that uh, extra few hundreds of a second that he found around the five and a half kilometer long lap. So Victor Martins fastest, Oscar Piastri second, second and first in the championship respectively. Matteo Nanini, top rookie in third place, fourth place Lorenzo Colombo, fifth place Alexander Smolia, sixth place Caio Collette, seventh Patrick Pasma with a late improvement as well. Kush Miney therefore who uh, pitted before the end of the, uh, the session coming home in eighth place and then we had uh, Kush My uh, Matteo Nanini, Kao Collette and Kai Collette and Patrick Pasma were the top three rookies in that session. Miney in eighth place, Frank Bird ninth as he was yesterday. Henry Cordiel, 10th. Sebastian Fernandez will be disappointed with 11th place, but he had some issues with the car. We saw him in the pits with the, uh, the laptop and then trying to figure things out. So clearly an issue there holding him back. Hugo de Vilda was 12th. Rigo Sorsi, 13th. Leonardo Lerandi, 14th. Xavier Yovaras in 15th. Uh, 16th quickest was Petra Potecek, but he is going to get a two-place grid penalty. So we'll start the race 18th. Federico Malvestiti qualifies 17th, but he'll be bumped up to 16th on the grid. Lucas Aleko Roy, 18th. That will put him up to 17th on the grid with the potato penalty. And then Alessio Deleda in 19th. And uh, Matthias Luton, Luton with his uh, best lap of the weekend so far. Driver completely new to uh, racing. 2 minutes 14.098 seconds. Doing a good job to get as close as he is to these regular drivers. So congratulations from the MP Motorsport team to their uh, driver. Victor Martins with his ninth pole position, he gets out of the car and well all he can do, all he can do is get pole and try and win the race, nothing else is in his control, whatever happens he's had a fantastic season and no doubt about it there is a, a bright future ahead of him, a strong performance in his debut season last year in the championship to finish in the top five and uh, he's going to be 
first or second in this year's uh, championship, whatever happens in the race in four hours' time. Uh, so their confirmation of the times. Victor Martins with a 208.014 pole position. Oscar Piastri uh, second, almost two tenths down though. Third, Matteo Nanini. Uh, fourth, Lorenzo Colombo. Alexander Smolier and Kyle Collette will be on the third row of the grid. Patrick Pasma, who had a good overtake yesterday, uh, will be on the fourth row of the grid with Kush Miney, yesterday's rookie winner. Frank Bird and Omri Cordil will line up on row five. Sebastian Fernandez and Hugo de Vilda will line up on row six. And then on row seven, we'll have Grigoire Sorsi and Leonardo uh, Lorande. 15th will be uh, Xavier Lovras. And then, as I say, 16th with a two-place grid penalty at Potecek. And then Malvis Diti, Aleko Roy, Deleda and Luton coming home. 17th, 18th, 19th and 20th in that 20-minute qualifying session. So we'll get some highlights now of the second qualifying session of the weekend. Well, we're right near the uh, airport here. It's only a 10 or 15 minute taxi rides to Yas Island. Just about half an hour's drive from Abu Dhabi. There is the Yas Hotel underneath which the circuit goes. And this was the uh, drivers getting into the cars, getting ready to go, all putting new tyres on. Victor Martins uh, out, but saving his run till right at the end of the session. Kaya Collette there in action as well. And there, Lorenzo Colombo who was one of the first drivers to set an early benchmark time. But here this weekend on the podium yesterday, there was problems for the Arden driver, Sebastian uh, Fernandez, the Venezuelan, stranded in the pits for some time during that session and out of position on the grid compared to how quick we know he can be. Alexander Smolier was pushing on hard through turn four over the kerbs a couple of times. He went on his way to a top five finish in qualifying. Oscar Piastri, did his best to get pole position, but in the end, he was a couple of tenths shy of Victor Martins, who crossed the line just behind him. One of the last drivers through to improve still further. He'd already got the pole position sorted, but uh, extended his advantage by almost a tenth of a second with that last lap of the session. So uh, an excellent qualifying session for Victor Martins. He'll go on to that final race, round 20 of the championship with a 20 and a half point deficit, but he will be on pole position. And the facts are plain and simple. He's got to go out and win the race to try and take the championship away from Oscar Piastri. He'll line up on the front row alongside in the race coming up here at local time at 1.30. We'll be on air quarter of an hour before that. So it's just about four hours away from the final race of the Formula Renault Euro Cup 2019. Thanks for joining us and we'll talk you through the race later on. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.